आशीष जी ठीक कर लीजिए आपका टेढ़ा लग उल्टा हो गया है वेरी गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम आई वे टीवी नॉर्थो टीवी लाइव नो टूडे वी हैव वेबिनार फ्रॉम बिहार ऑर्थोपेडिक एसोसिएशन ऑन प्राइमरी टोटल हिप आर्थोप्लास्टी सो नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट आवर सेक्रेटरी मधुसूदन सर टू स्टार्ट द वेबिनार गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन रिस्पेक्टेड प्रेसिडेंट गोवा प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर एस एम सराब सर स्पीकर स्पीकर डॉक्टर दीपांकर सेन सर ऑल द पैनलिस्ट मॉडरेटर ऑर्थो टीवी बोवा मेंबर्स एंड ऑल द ऑडियंस टूडे वी आर कंडक्टिंग एनार ऑन बेसिक ही पार्थो प्लास्टी इट्स प्रैक्टिकल टिप्स एंड ट्रिक्स our our speaker today needs no introduction but i will make an attempt to give him one he is very well renowned orthopedic and joint replacement surgeon did his master in orthopedics from jipmer frcs from uk and mch ortho from liverpool and have been an orthopedic icon from last 25 years I welcome Dr. Dipankar Sen sir today as a speaker. Very warm welcome, sir. I wish our BOA members and all the audience will utilize today's webinar as it its most. Thank you. I I request our respected president, Professor Dr. Sen sir, up sir, to say a few words. Good evening. On behalf of Bihar Orthopedic Association. it is my honor and privilege to welcome you all total hip replacement is one of the most common procedure being done for different hip disorder if anyone ask me what is the best operation in orthopedic surgery my answer without hesitation would be total hip replacement this is known as operation of century as it has revolutionized the treatment of patient for advanced hip disorder primary goal of successful thr is to re establish correct hip biomechanics this means optimum limb length offset center of rotation tension and avoidance of impingement i hope this webinar will help in improving our knowledge and skill thank you now i invite dr sudip kumar to continue the session right uh, thank you saraf sir and uh, i would like to welcome all of you all uh, especially dipankar sir uh, for uh, taking his time out uh, to come to this boa webinar and uh, sharing his uh, knowledge and vast experience as uh, dr madhusudan sir has said about him 25 years of experience he is highly trained surgeon and well respected in the field of arthroplasty and trauma so he has been a regular faculty in uh, ao trauma courses various arthroplasty courses and uh, he's a he's a very good teacher to be honest uh, about it i learned a lot from him over these years uh, while every time i interact with him meet him it's been real honor and uh, to interact with him so those who have interacted with him past <laughs> experience so and i'll welcome other uh, panelist uh, here uh, dr anjit sir dr ashwini dr rajiv kumar bhat sir uh, i think uh, ashish is here rajiv anand sir and all other uh, whom i'm sorry i'm unable to take the names there are plenty of people here but welcome you all and uh, without uh, making any ado i'll just uh, request dipankar sir to kindly share the screen and start his talk sir all yours thank you very much first of all my sincere regards to professor saraf and all the members of the boa i'm really privileged to be invited into this meeting as as a faculty um it, it's really an honor to share our thoughts and ideas amongst amongst the group i hope that whatever i have collected so far i'm try i've tried my best to accommodate most of them within reasonable time and i i will continue uh, periodically with video clips in between the powerpoint presentations uh, please interrupt me if you need any any more comments 
just at the beginning, as I told, I'm just repeating to everybody that if there is any by chance, any power failure or net connection failure, just give me a couple of seconds. I should be back uh, with my backup setups. Sure. So with this, now I share my screen. So I'll, I'll request rest of the panels and faculty to can un, uh, mute yourself. And if possible, keep your screen uh, videos uh, off so that the streaming can go, uh, go uneventfully. And all yours, sir. Is my screen available with everybody? Uh, not yet, sir. It is. Uh, I think it's coming up, but it's. Uh, you're sharing your screen right now. It's not. Uh, your PowerPoint is I not coming. I have done, in. sir. I think it will take a while. Just hold on for a uh, few seconds. Uh, yes, sir. Your uh, screen is visible. Your PowerPoint is on the screen. All yours, sir. All right. Please make it full screen, sir. Okay. I've done. So, yes, we begin our journey towards the labor development. Uh, a new sort of life, the journey to live on. With their focus on. Life is nothing but movement, and movement is a proof of life. So, if there is no movement, no life. So, with this, I'd like to continue. So basically, although it's a few meter, I understand there are a lot of ages also sitting in various parts of the Bihar, Jharkhand, and I, I have forwarded it to even our students. So the most important learning outcome in today's, today's webinar will be, if I'm able to deliver that we have to understand the principles here. It is all about principle, principle, principle. If we stick to these principles, it's most likely that we are going to achieve the correct and the best outcome every time. So my message to the juniors, that do not try to be heroic, do not try to be six the first ball. So to understand the principles of THS surgery, get it born inside your system, so that you continue to deliver it every time, every time. All these principles, what it does is, it allows you to follow something called evidence-based practice of medicine. It's the most, and I do it that way, or you do it that way. <coughs> there are people who are sound is breaking, sir. Your sound is breaking. Sorry? Your sound is breaking, Sorry? sir. There is something with your, with your audio, sir. It's not clear. Uh, so may I request Dr. Samsun Uda to, to take this matter? Sir, please. Uh, Samsun, uh, sir, sound uh, is not sir, clear. Sir, I will, I will request better, you to switch off your video so that the streaming can go fast. Yes, sir. Yes. Dipankar, yes, sir. Uh, are, you, are you asking me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes. Because uh, I think the streaming is a little bit slow. So if you can uh, just uh, stop your video. Uh, the rest of the things can. Uh... Well, there is no video running as such. It's, no, no, it's, sir. I've, I've done, sir. I've done. No... I've stopped this okay, video. Okay, okay, sir. Done. It's done. It's done, sir. It's done. Please go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is. The, the principles are nothing but it is an outcome of consistent practice of evidence-based medicine. So we do it in the technique which has been refined modified, tested, and the results have been analyzed in a very objective manner. So with the understanding of this principle and implementation of this evidence-based practice, you should be able to perform total hip replacement under watchful eye of yours, as well as some of your supervisors, in case of your junior surgeon, to achieve the best possible outcome. Who is a hip replacement? It is the person in whom the hip is not really working normally, he or she requires a hip replacement. What I mean by that? So a hip not working, it may be painful, it may be stiff, it may be structurally deficient, all sorts of things. So we just briefly go through the some of the indications. Uh, I know all of you are aware, but just it is just a run. So it's broken hip, which we commonly fix it or replace it. Uh, I am not going to the date of whether we fix it, replace it. For today's meeting, we will consider what are the indications of replacement in a broken hip. The fracture component, 
infrastructure, the age, we commonly talk about the age, but it is not just the numerical age of 50, 60, 70 or whatever. It is the biological age. That means if the person has restored his mobility and he is able to move in and out of the house and he's expected to outdoor movements for more than six months, that means he has the potential. He or she should be considered for a total equipment if he or she has broken the hip. Then, yeah, this is just a picture of the previous one. So it's a distance trial. So we have practiced total hip replacement. The next, another common indication, all of us to it, fix it with all expectations, but sometimes it do not work. Whatever, if it's a cannulated screw, if it's a dinner keep screw with a supplement or whatever, conditions only works. So to make it, take the patient back to his or her usual shelf, we need to do a total hip replacement in these conditions. Make sure that this failure of the fixation is not just a mechanical, and it is also the infection factor has to be always borne in your mind all the time as, you, as we um, plan our management plan. So this is a fractured neck of femur fixed with cannulated screw, three years down the line. We can see the tilt line. It's not oh, okay. Ending oh, up the hip yeah. Yeah. A similar one, a broken hip basis and say was fake, but over a period of time, patient shows signs of infection, temperature, raised ESR, CRP, persistently painful. Yes, open it and we find that it's it's frankly, frankly infection. So what we did is a two stage. First stage was clock removal and second stage was uh, implantation after the ESR CRP was normal. This is the this is the final extreme. Osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis of the hip, relatively uncommon in comparison to the Western world, particularly the osteoarthritis, but rheumatoid is pretty well there. But yes, a painful hip, the person is not able to sit properly, the person is not able to sit in a car or drive a scooter or doing his usual household activities. Yes, that is positively an indication for a hip replacement. That's the picture. So this was another one. Uh, this gentleman had developed a vascular necrosis of the femoral head due to some unknown reason. He was seen by some of one of our colleagues in a different part of the country. And that time, a fibular graft was attempted. But you can clearly see the passage of time. The hip didn't work. The hip got terribly deformed, painful. It was virtually restricting the patient in a wheelchair. So we had done one replacement and he's waiting for the second one. These are the situations when there is no doubt that hip replacement is mandatory. Completely damaged hip due to childhood infection. Parents from the northeast of the country have found that something happened into the hip with some sort of discharge, but they are not sure. After about 23 years, we do not get any records but it's obvious the head has completely undergo dissolution. We check the ESR, CRP, we add the heap, make sure that there is no present infection. This is the most important thing to determine that whether the infection is present. So we go for in this particular case, single stage hip replacement. This is also an indication for hip replacement as the hip is non-functional. This is something I called a naughty hip. That means the hip was never located inside the socket. Parents didn't realize from poor family backgrounds, the child had a limping and these sorts of problems. And finally, it has been diagnosed. A clear, clear diagnosis that, that uh, the hip was never in place. The socket is shallow. The proximal femur is ill-developed in comparison to the other side. So to person demands, I want to walk, I want to go to school. So when I operated him, he was at the age of 17. So yes, taking appropriate amount of consideration after discussing with the patient family. He had so these are some of the common indications we get. Uh, this one, uh, as I say, it's a whole surgery. It's certainly not a wrong surgery. 
surgeries and new pain. In some places, these surgeries are done uh, due to availability of resources, due to availability of the expertise, whatever you may say, this surgery has worked well. But now it's about 10 years down the line. The lady is surviving pretty well, wants to still talk, go to the religious sort of prison and everything. And, and she is happy that something can be done. So after a complete explanation of all the consequences, complications, long-term outcome, we performed, we converted this hemiarthroplasty into a hip replacement. This is no way undermining the importance of hemiarthroplasty in the management of fracture neck of femur. These types of processes are still very much there and I will never say it is wrong. At least it works as a patient. It gives patient a reasonable amount of mobility. Even my own grandmother, she would go and survive this for about seven years after the surgery was done. For the sole purpose of hip placement today, to provide a free mobility to the patient so the patient can say hip, hip, hooray. That's what is the motto to provide our result. So with this, I go to my first video clip. Um, just for the second, I will... I will talk through this video. Can all of you see and hear the video sound and the uh, picture? Not right now, sir. No, sir. We can see the PPT. Uh, you, we can see your PowerPoint, but not your uh, uh, video is not coming on the screen. So if you can minimize or share the whole screen again, leave it and share the whole screen again. I will reduce the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. And now the video should be there. Uh, sir, it will Is take 10-15 seconds, no, no, not yet. So let's just give 10-15 seconds. Still yeah. your PPT is there. We can see your PPT full screen actually. But uh, Well, I have reduced the PPT from my end. Sir, can you uh, just, just unshare? Your, uh, uh, leave it first, I think. Unshare, yeah. And now again you share it. Okay. Now again you share it. All with, right. Uh, How is Thank it now? You. Yes, sir. Now your video is yeah. on the screen now. Rajat, uh, speaking from <coughs> the Gopur Mission Hospital. Can you hear the sound? The yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes. So today Can you hear we are going to discuss as well as demonstrate the various technical aspects of uh, total hip replacement. So, <clears throat> as we do uh, before we actually go for the surgery, we do something called planning and out of this planning um, there is something we do called templating that means we gauge the size of the prosthesis what we are most likely to use. It may deviate but it's most likely. So what we have done is this is the x-ray for the patient. Uh, we have printed it with 100% magnification. Uh, it's an x-ray pelvis including both hips. So <clears throat> for the purpose of the templating, we have to gauge the size of the cup as well as the stem. So how do we do it? Uh, first we take the cup. These are the templates in transparent plastic supplied by the companies. Uh, we match it against uh, the acetabulum x-ray and see which is the best fit. So let's do it for this one. Uh, I'll just pause it for a second. This is a message to the, the juniors the no, that, yeah. that templating should be done in every single case. You should do it yourself, record it somewhere in the operation theater board so that you can match what size. You may be, that may become a little bit of erroneous. That's no harm. But the idea of the templating is to anticipate what are the sizes, what can be the possible offset, what are the abnormalities, if, if anything, you can gauge and be prepared accordingly. So with that, uh, first you do the acetabulum, 
you take the age of the acetabulum particularly the fovea where you, where, where you should have a lower end of the uh, cup and uh, after that you go to the femur So in this particular X-ray, we do the templating on the normal side, and that's probably the center of rotation of the femoral head, where we will uh, center our uh, cup. So this is the template. It has got various sizes. This, and we have also another sheet. Let me see which one goes best. So on a cursory look, to me, it appears that the cup. Approximately the cup which fits and match with the center of the rotation of the femoral head. The cup is surrounded all around by bone. Uh, so to me, this appears to be the best fit. So that's what we're most going to use most likely, and that measures 46. Uh, let's see. The video, the video, so so the video is not so working, we, sir. It's yes. not moving. Uh, the voice is coming, now, but it's not moving. For the stem. So, again, uh, uh, as far as plastics, and uh, given the shape of the femur, so, so these are guys restart? Uh, I think so. From the uh, template, the moment you have put the template, so you can start it from there. Sorry, sorry. There is a problem of uh, network. Let me see. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. The video is not moving, sir. Well, it shows that my internet connection is unstable. This is the real problem. Is it okay now? Answer, uh, please. You can hear you, but no. To me, the it's not coming on screen. Is to be the best fit. Just a minute, Uh, in the between, I would like to ask Sudeep, sir, uh, that uh, how frequently do you template your cases? Yeah, so I was thinking uh, of asking the same question to the panelists. Initially, <laughs> I used to template, uh, say, uh, so when I started here in 13 and started operating from 14, so used to template uh, till 17, I, I did uh, all my templating, then, uh, then used trauma cat for some time and then completely stopped templating from 19, 18, 18 onwards completely stopped it basically because trauma cad you need to change your uh, uh, it is a, it's a costly software so ashish gave me a trick that every time you have to get a new problem email is, problem is most of the time members they will supply don't don't supply the template yeah no, no. no. <clears throat> i have templates but problem is this now x rays okay now x-rays now, now, nowadays you get Sir's video is there. Sir, uh, your video yeah, is yeah. here, so we can, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yeah. But the audio from your video is not there, so. Audio from the video is not there. How is it no. possible? Okay, okay. Let me, let me just. Now video yeah. is there, audio is. Oh. So, as Ranjit sir was telling, the issue is definitely. Yes, now the uh, video and audio both are there, sir, coming. We can see you templating. So, you can. To me, uh, the neck will align, it matches center to center with the stem, what the uh, head will be. To me, the size three stem appears to be the best fit. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have the lateral view so that we could have matched but normally one view gives you good picture 
So these are the two sizes I'll keep in my mind and let's see what it actually uh, requires. Uh, before we actually go into the surgery, we should talk a little bit about some other things. For example, the anesthesia. The patient uh, is going to be having a spinal and sometimes our colleagues also put epidural along with that uh, just because of continuous pain control. The patient will be given IV antibiotics. There are various regimens. Some give one dose, some give three dose. So I normally give three doses of antibiotic, kefiroxim, uh, that continues for the first 24 hours. Other than this, in order to reduce the bleeding, I also use uh, tranexamic acid, about one gram intravenous. It's given uh, at the same time the anesthesia is done. And that's all probably we need to do uh, some uh, work some, some before the surgery. So, as we do the surgery, one of the most important thing is patient position. And I recollect uh, from my training days in the United Kingdom, the person who does the surgery, they have to do the position. Although in our busy lifestyle here, or sometimes I must say busy, uh, we leave it up to our theater colleagues, but ideally it should be done by the surgeon. And I emphasize particularly the junior PT uh, students, they must know about the position. So what it is, there is something. So I do the deep to lateral position. Um, the patient should be dead lateral. There are two supports, one in the sacrum, right behind the sacrum, and another one, like an L, it supports the ASI gaze, anterior superior IGX spine. Unless these two are rigid enough, the patient might tilt forward or backward, and that will change your cup version, which is going to be damn difficult to assess. So with this dead lateral position, the patient is stable, he has been covered mostly on the head ends. This is something called bare weather to keep the patient warm. The lower leg has been stabilized on a pillow uh, with some tapes and something along, along the hand that we had and we just keep it covered with something and now uh, we can see that the leg is mobile. I will do it anterolateral approach. They must go right up to the front and I also need to get some access at the back. So this is the dead lateral position which is mandatory for a successful hip replacement. So before actually we start the surgical ripping, uh, what we do is, is just a proper cleaning of the leg. You know these patients are there at their home, they are old and as they come to the ward sometimes they harbor certain germs into the, into the body. So what we do is nothing but just a chlorex in soap and a mop and we just clean the from the top of the iliac wing almost up to the mid leg. Is the audio and video uh, well audio uh, visible and audible? Uh, yes, going thing. very smooth right now. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, So now the proper surgical draping is going on. So uh, two members are doing it from the front as well as the back. And the fluid, what they're using is 10% uh, povidone iodine. Uh, please note that uh, things are being done from center to periphery, and the groin will be done at the end. Uh, normally, I will recommend to drape, uh, sorry, to prepare uh, almost from the top of the iliac crest, the umbilical line, and it should come at least up to the ankle joint. Uh, whatever the gauze pieces which are coming to the groin, they will never go back to the incision site. And after this, uh, the police will complete the surgical draping.
So now we are going to talk about a little bit how to put on gloves. I have seen uh, people using various techniques, uh, just putting a first glove, then the gown, and then the second glove. Well, I think uh, the best, the recommended one by the uh, various international bodies is first you put the whole gown, your hands eventually covered, you must have disposable gowns with cups and I will show you how to put on gloves without exposing it. So this is the first gloves which I will use. I will take the left side first. This is the left side. In the gloves, you just identify the thumb. Here is the thumb. And I put my thumb right opposite to the thumb and then invert the gloves on top. So the whole hand is actually inside and then it just slides. I do it on the other side, now I can touch, taking it, this is the gloves, uh, thumb, so I put my thumb right opposite to it and invert the gloves on my hand and then the whole thing just goes in. So there is no touch of raw skin with the outside of the gloves and it covers the cup. So now we are almost ready for the surgery. Uh, the patient has been positioned, the draped, uh, we have checked the consent, we have checked the side and we have matched it with the x-ray. Uh, I just, uh, our team, uh, all equipment ready, functioning, everything, anesthetic side okay? Alright. So before you actually put the incision, I always recommend the junior colleagues about doing some landmark drawing. Uh, that will make life easier. So I can feel the trochanter here right up to the tip, so that's the tip. So basically you draw the trochanter all around. Okay. And my incision will be about, it's like a lazy J, uh, normally about four to five centimeters from the tip of the trochanter and more or less similar down. So so it's, it's like this. Uh, this is an advice to the junior colleagues. Don't be fancied upon small incisions. You must do the job properly. You need to have a correct exposure, comfortable exposure. Remember, tissue cut electrically will heal much better than tissue stretched. So this is the incision. We just put some cross marks so that we can uh, match it as we close. Uh, this, will, this is going to be our exposure. So now we really start the operation. Uh, Some of the breathing points we forceps. So the skin is done, and now we are just going to give a single incision to the TFL, and I will do the cut with the scissors just along the same length of the incision, self retainer piece. Caesar. So we have exposed the trochanter and we have the gluteus exposed at the top. And uh, now we'll go into the next step. So we have the gluteus medius at the top. What we do is at the top of the trochanter, we split it uh, at the junction of 
two third and one third, two third in the front and one third at the back. So basically you can see the fat and you can put your fingers below. Uh, can I have the diathermy? Yeah. So basically as we lift the gluteus, the idea is to leave a calf of tissue with the trochanter so that you can stitch it later. So that's what we do. So this is more or less the age. And I just go a little bit away. Our cut goes along the anterior line of the vastus. Slide external rotation, please. With a small bleeder, just the diaphragm. Pause it. So we continue with our cut till. Slowly external rotate. That's it. So now the hematoma has come. You can see the large from the inside the is coming suction. Now, I do not know whether you can appreciate the tissue which I am holding is the uh, blending of the gluteus minimus along with the uh, top capsule. So we do not go two finger beds above because then we have the inferior gluteal nerve. The neck is slowly getting exposed. Now I need a moment. So this woman is at the inferior border of the neck. Take it out. Another woman piece. So this second woman goes just behind the, under the TFL, just behind the trochanter. We need a little bit of clearance in the neck. Okay. Yeah. So virtually the whole neck is exposed. Can I get a smaller self-retainer, if possible? And we put this smaller cell button at the top for better visualization. Forceps. So we just release the tissues. A little bit more external rotation. That's it. So almost the whole of the neck is exposed. Can you withdraw the home and for a second? The reason is I just want to feel the desert drop. And as I can feel the lesser drop, I plan my cut. The neck osteotomy, there are templates available, but one finger breadth above the top of the lesser trochanter suits for most circumstances. So basically, I draw the cut here, and that should be sufficient. Can I have the saw, please?
but so that's the next question. So we have done the osteotomy. Now we have to retrieve the femoral head. So for that we use this box screw. Just need to do a little bit of capsule of cut at the top. The other way. The head should come out. That's the head. We measure it and keep it on record. So now we have a nice exposure of the acetabulum by just simply correct placement of the three homans. So this one is just over the anterior rim of the acetabulum. This one is just behind and this one at the top. So basically we have a full view of the floor of the acetabulum and I can also see the tail which is difficult to show but it is, it is clearly visible. For the purpose of the rimming, uh, we will start with the lower one. We have measured the head, which is 30, sorry, 46. So, we start the rimming now. The first one, the reamer which I have taken is size 39. So, I have placed it into the floor of the acetabulum. Now, two things here. One is an inclination, another is a version. So, the inclination is 45 degree. So, this is the angle. 45 degree with the horizontal plane and then for the version people have confusions but look if the patient is dead lateral and we hold it like this you go this way your cup remains open anteriorly so there is anti-version and if you bring your hand behind that becomes retroversion the cup will look back what we want right, is okay. approximately 10 degrees of anti-version so that's what we are going to do. So the rule of hand is we put it into the floor of the acetabulum and my hand remains more or less aligned, uh, sorry, directed towards the opposite foot end. So this is the one. Give it a little bit of pressure so that it just right into the floor and it just rims. Should rim it till we get cancellous bleeding bone exposed. So this is done with the reamer 39. So now we are at the size 46 reamer. And I can see that it's really done all along the length. It's tight and it actually matches our templated size. So on the basis of the reaming, I have decided about a size 46 cup. Now we are ready to put the real cup. Uh, it's an uncemented one with option of two to three screws. So we have mounted the cup on its mounter and now we have to maintain our version as well as inclination. So the inclination is 45 degrees and I just make the cup a slight open anteriorly. So this is my placement of the cup. It needs a few gentle blows. I'll just wait for a couple of minutes and then give a little more tapping. It's already pretty stable. Push. Can I get that uh, thing just to see that if it is reaching the floor, the screw depth gauge? Yeah, so we just touch it and see it is right onto the floor. Alright? Wash. Regarding number of screws, one, two, and three, whatever it is, it has to be very stable. Given the fit, 
I am quite happy with even one screw. Screw depth gauge. Size twenty five screw, please. <clears throat> so this is the first screw. sitting well yeah so just for safety we give another screw so we're giving the posterior one now size 20 screw please so this is the second screw going into the 11 o'clock position <laughs> done wash and insert so This insert has got pegs which should fit with the cup's reciprocal slots. So it just fits edge to edge and just give So we have placed the liner into the metallic shell. As we said, the pegs are matching the slots and just gently tap it. Then we check with a McDonald's or something that is really locked. Yes, it is. So basically we are done with the acetabulum. Now we have the acetabulum done. We are ready to do the femur. The femur is actually flexed to back completely 90 degrees and the knee is basically being stabilized by my assistant's symphysis pubis and he's also holding the distal segment of the leg. So we have the proximal part exposed where we are going to use a canal opener. Uh, we should go as lateral as possible and People also do versions of antiversion, 10 degrees and etc. I normally prefer it a neutral. So I'm just seeing the tip of the, this is the tip of the uh, canal which is open like an oblique and then I just open the canal by gently tapping the opener and take the bone piece out. That's it. So this is basically just to open the medullary cavity. It should go as length as possible.
वन सीरिंज वाटर प्लीज start with our first brooch which is size 0 0 should go easy we have got a strong narrow canal i can see so now we are using the size 3 reamer which matches with our templating you can see that it goes pretty satisfactory so that's what we are going to use uh you can use a trialing right now but it depends on the person to person the beginners should use a trialing now uh i can do with the original stem because that's not going to change my position anymore and uh then we go for the uh, final stem so this is the end of broaching now we have the last number 3 broach and we have used a standard neck and a head size 32 which is permissible with this system and now let's see how the reduction goes gentle pull and it goes easy I will check movement and my assistant is doing all sorts of rotations flexion please extension extension okay and in flexion do some rotations it will be difficult for me to show but i can see that it is not coming out so that is the end of trial real prosthesis it's hydroxyapatite coated a size 3 so it just goes into its previous brooch tag easily i just give a few taps at the end now what i'll do is i need a little bit of chips of bones to pack the area around the yeah there is a bit of cancellous bone which is from the very first box chisel which has taken out so i'll pack it nicely in the gap whatever is left and then there be a few more loads okay now the head please So this is the original head, size 32. Just a little tap. That's it. And now we go to reduce it. Okay, Parthu. Take it out. Completely, completely take completely out. that's it so okay please test the movements again flexion extension go to flexion do some rotation i can see it is difficult to show it in the camera but i can see it is completely stable inside the acetabulum so that's the placement of the final implants so now we start the closure we have given a decent amount of wash so with the tissue force what i'm holding is the gluteus medius uh, sorry gluteus uh, minimus and i take one deep bite here along with the gluteus remnant inside it will be difficult to see but anyway i just normally put one single stitch into the gluteus There are people who do it in single layer, minimus and medius. It's up to you, whichever you are confident. And now I will come to the medius, slightly so internal rotate, so that they can see. Now you can see the importance of the tissue cuff which I had left before for the purpose of suturing. This is the bulk of the gluteus medius. 
just taking it and along with the remnant left. That's the next stitch. You can use it continuous. Somebody uses it interrupted. Someone builds through the uh, yeah, greater uh, trochanter of the aid, whatever. It's your choice. At the end of the day, you need to have a secure closure which will keep the tone of the adapters. That is a main point of success for the person. What is If you use interrupted, four or five stitches is sufficient. And I always emphasize the importance of keeping a cup of tissue along with the trochanter. Otherwise, it's going to be hell of a job to close your well. You can do it. You can do it by drilling, but you can avoid that. And you can see the fairly tension free closure. Just hold this one. And here, on the lower side, you are basically taking a little bit of bite with the tough fibers of the vascus. Well, that's the end of the closure of the gluteus. So we have just closed it and make sure with my colleague that all our counts are correct. Gauze, instrument, everything. So now we are going to close the TFL. Uh, what I will do is I will just first put a middle one which makes a position easier. Simple. And the suture I am using is Pankar sir, uh, are you there?
Hello, can you, can all of you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, now I'll go to the cementing video, okay? Sure, sure, okay, go ahead, please. So in the meanwhile, uh, Shamshul, uh, if, is there any question coming from the audience till sir loads uh, his cementing video? Is it okay, sir, yes, if we can sir, just take side. Uh, one or two questions if there are any? Uh, yes, if possible, go on. So you can share your screen and uh, by the time, so is there any uh, question uh, coming from uh, uh, audience, uh, Samshul? Yes, please. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, Rajiv, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the, Dr. Deepanka, you're going to use drain. So is it routine for you or you use, use sometimes drain or sometimes not? I, I normally do not use drain because okay. there have been ample amount of evidence that using a drain or without a drain, the yield, the result is same, whatever parameters you say, uh, whether it's a knee or a hip in terms of post-operative hemoglobin, post-operative hematoma, post-operative mobility, recovery, everything is the same. Uh, I have done my own audits, which has <clears> been published once into the West Bengal Journal. And we converge with this thoughts that drain is not really of much use unless you expect active source of bleeding. Now, I will say if you have a source of bleeding, you must stop that before you come out of the operation table. That's my uh, line of yeah. thought. Yeah, Dr. Dipankar, I'm Dr. Rajiv Anand. Uh, yeah, in your video, you didn't take the ester bullet trial. So you straight away go after the... No, no, sorry. That no. I, I, didn't, I didn't take a video of that part or maybe the person who did the editing he thought it's unimportant, so here, yes, I have used the trialing, certainly, certainly. Yeah, yeah that's what I wanted to say. That one was missed into the video, sorry for that. Yeah, right, right. So the juniors should take yes. the message. Do you, do you check yeah. for combined version? Combined Hello. version, what, what do you mean by that? Anti version of, uh, combined anti version of uh, acetabular cup and uh, femoral neck. Sir, I use only version, anti-version into the acetabulum, but with the femur, I will go neutral because trying anti-version, because whatever you are doing on the table, it's on, on, on eye, eye, eye wash actually. You may not know that if the patient is really given 10 degrees and also in the femoral side 10 degrees, you may end up in trouble. Patient tries to see it by whatever means it pops out. So. With 10 degrees of version, anti-version in the cup and a neutrally placed femur, it works well, wonderfully well in most situations. I've never, never faced any problem. Uh, so really that, is, uh, that is also one of the beauty of the uh, anterolateral approach that you have to actually not really struggle with the version. Not, not really. Not, and you have to actually all, try yes. and be try and be neutral or slightly uh, retroverted, if not um, antiverted. So that's uh, one of the beauty of the centrolateral approach. No, no, it, and, it's, uh, rather, it is better to keep a bit, uh, uh, I mean, retro, not retro, I mean, less than neutral. 15, not 15, 5 degree, 10 degree is good enough. And your right? uh, construct is more stable. That, I that have is a centrolateral approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, yeah, we are so, retro version of the cup is a complete. No, no, no retro no, version no, is no. not allowed, sir. No, 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 not retro version. We are not talking of cup. We are talking no, no. of, I mean, version of, yeah, uh, I mean, stem. So, stem neutral. In neutral, in neutral yeah. anterolateral approach, you tend to be neutral. And uh, yeah, in, in cup in also, you tend to be tend to be neutral, not anti butted as we do it in the posterior lateral. Those who are used to doing posterior lateral approach, they try and uh, anti vert their uh, cup a bit more than uh, what yeah. people in the anterolateral approach are hard yes, yes. to do. Posterolateral, you have to be very precise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I have one question. The approach, uh, Dr. Dipankar, the approach yes. is, you took is a classical hard disk. You didn't take the modified one, isn't it? No, no, no. Why, sir? Just because most of the we usually do modified hard disk. But uh, well, any reason? It, no, there is no particular reason, as I said, that you do what you are comfortable with to produce good result. So I am comfortable with this. Uh, I do it consistently in all cases, and uh, I, I produce results. So there's no reason for me to change just for the sake of doing it. Can I go to Dr. the cement? You, 
just hold okay. on a sir okay, then there are one or two okay, questions okay, we'll 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 dr yeah. rajiv Dr. Sir, please switch yeah. on your video yeah sir. yeah yeah so yeah dr dipankar you showed one case where uh, in your video where there was a failure of fibular grafting so yeah uh, uh, when finding the femoral canal in fibular grafting it's very difficult because fibula is very hard bone tough bone yeah, so how do yeah. you tackle it well that particular case i had done the neck osteotomy and i found it's a solid piece of yeah bone into the into the uh, crossing my path so what i did is i drilled multiple holes into that cortical piece of bone and then i just used a bone chisel to take that piece out that it it worked it came out i time. usually do actually chisel usually sometimes i i i fear that the trochanteric fracture may happen so i usually do is to take the smallest size of the saw and cut it laterally yeah you can do that medially. you can do that yeah, yeah. as long as you keep the integrity of the trochanteric region that's what yeah i mean yeah. you can use bar which we most commonly yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. any yeah. anything so is removed it is really device. tough to remove that fibula It's really any tough. device to take that piece of bone out any device is sufficient yeah. okay you have and to there is always chance of small small blade uh, or reciprocating saw yeah, or blade. a thin blade because they tend to break also so you have to be very yeah, very yeah. careful using those blades yeah and and a little bit piece is left now so you have to be flush with the lateral wall of trochanter yeah uh, otherwise malposition chances are very high Yeah. So well, I go to the cementing part. Yes. Next. Yes. 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 Dipankar sir, please switch your video, sir. Can you see this now? Yes, sir. We can see the yes, screen we are seeing, not the video as of now. Please play the video, sir. Just a minute. Is this is it coming now? The video and the sound? Uh, no, not yet, sir. So let's let's give ten fifteen seconds more, and hopefully we'll see it. Just give me, let me know because sure, uh, we can see your uh, screen where uh, you have all the videos saved. So I should start now. I think you can play the video, but it's not coming up on I'm, the screen. I'm playing it now. No, sir, it's not. Uh, so. Uh, you open it up and then uh, unshare and share it again i think all right stop this. open the video yeah okay hang on hang on hang on sure Where is the video gone? Is this visible and audible now? No, you have to share your screen, sir. It, you haven't shared your screen yet. Okay, I really do not know what's happening. Uh, okay. I am share screen. So, Samshul, uh, can somebody just guide me a little bit? Well, I that the last one worked. Yeah, it worked very well. The last one was fantastic. Yeah, I think it's coming oh, up. Now it's there. Yeah. Your screen is your screen has come. Just click that uh, clip three cementing THR. Yes. Yes. Is, is it, it run, running in the background sir i have just started it okay so it's not showing up your screen uh, in which you have multiple videos uh, eight of them is showing up again so you have to minimize this screen and think it is running in the background just a minute let me just close the whole thing yeah yeah okay
sharing. Share screen. Somehow I'm not able to see the video. It should be seen in the screen. I'm so uh, just uh, sir, open it up and share your screen again. And Please just open. leave that window only open and rest minimized uh, in the system. Let me just close even the PowerPoint. Yes. Yes. Let me just close the thing also. Okay, now I just have this screen. Yeah. Sir, open the video in the background, sir. First. First, open the video in the background. In the background. Yeah, yeah, and then share the screen. Then come back to Zoom and share the screen. You'll see the video button. Video, video. This Take one. Me. So now come back on. Uh, I have opened the sharing. video. Yes, sir. Just paused it. Yes, sir. Now uh, come back to Zoom, sir. Zoom. Share screen. Share screen. And if you can see the video window in that. And if not, then please go to desktop. Sharing. No, no, no. Somehow, where is the... Then go to, go to desktop sharing, sir. Desktop sharing, which is... Uh... This uh, search for the video. Has it has it has it right come? Click. Or you can just right click, sir. Right click over the video. Is it running? No, sir. Just right click on the video, sir. Right click on the video. Right click. There is nothing working with the right click. Okay, just double click, sir. Try again. Double click. Um, I let me just all the. Or if, uh, if you have the videos in uh, Google Drive, you can share with me. I can run, sir. Uh, just just a minute. Let me see why the, the thing worked pretty well in the last time. Somehow, oh. Can you see this screen? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. You can see the window, window screen, sir. Okay, so. Or you can simply do, sir, uh, start a new PowerPoint, put the video there. It will run from no, there, No, no, no. Let let me just uh, double click. Yes, I think let's yes, keep one, 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 a few seconds before it comes please up. Wait. Uh, yeah. yeah, please wait. Please wait yeah. a while. If your internet speed is slow, then it may take time. So. Is it coming now? Or otherwise, you can just. Uh, no, uh, no not coming, sir. We'll, we'll just wait for a few seconds more, sir. Yeah, I please. think let's wait for a few seconds more. It should come. There is no reason that it should not come. It, I, uh, it's just a matter of speed only. Yes, it, the last video came. So just sure. do one thing, sir. Copy the video from there. Uh, stop sharing, sir. Do stop sharing. Copy the video and put in the last slide of the presentation, sir. Still, it's go not visible. My... No, now your screen uh, is unshared. Go, uh, go to my computer, copy the video and put a uh, drag and drop into the presentation, sir. Just, 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 I'll just call my son. Sure, sure. Yes, sir. In the meantime, we can discuss some questions and answers, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. So, like, uh, sir, what's the main advantage? Sudeep, sir, what's your experience between anterolateral approach and posterior approach? Like, how do you? you yeah, know, like, so, so like, I have, I have, like, I have mulled over it quite a lot. Uh, and uh, my, my practice is routinely all total hip replacements are posterior approach and all hemiarthroplasties are anti uh, Harding's approach. How to share this video? I want to show. So, so it's been uh, that way since last, uh, almost last 10 years now, 10, 11 years now. And it's just the way I've been trained and seen the stuff. So I continue doing that. Uh, I've thought many a times that I will do THR by enterolateral approach because exposure is good or do my hemiarthroplasty posterior approach, but I have not changed myself because see, if you are practicing with one particular team, everybody comes to know about uh, your stuff. So I think, yeah. of course, there is a theoretical disadvantage, but it has not been proven. And uh, I don't think uh, for me, it makes any difference, but I have to be careful in both the approaches of various stuffs. Okay. So, so Rajiv, have you got the video now? 
no no sir it's it's just coming up i think uh, we have to give a few second no uh, by appropriate broach and um, rimers uh, the slot has been prepared sir i think your sound is coming but the video is not showing up see this is goes almost up to the second so mark there is a question from youtube i posted in the chat box yeah Ranjit so, sir, are you there, sir? The whole thing right from the. So the question is, uh, Abhishek, there is a question from Dr. Binay that ideal length of screw. What? 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 and minimum is two screws uh, i'll come to that because that i have written it because uh, when dr sain was okay so now your video is there so sir we we'll continue so with the video now we are yes ready to uh, do the cementing technique uh, basically we are doing it on a dummy model as uh, we have done the uh, can you hear me uh, uncemented yes now then clear and we can see so your video this nicely is a well. of bone model uh, oh. which uh, we have prepared Uh, by appropriate broach and um, rimers uh, the slot has been prepared uh, we have already seen the cuts so this is the last rimer which has gone comfortably and we can see this is goes almost up to the second mark uh, here so that's the stem uh, that's the depth i need for insertion and before actually the cement is prepared i'll also make sure that the stem which i'm going to use that also goes the full length okay effortless now the canal distally is blocked we have blocked it with a small piece of bone uh, this is just for the purpose of pressurizing against resistance so now my colleague uh, lizo will start preparing the cement uh, it comes in two components uh, this is the powder which is the polymer and this is the liquid which is the monomer so lizo please demonstrate you can bring it a bit in the center so uh, i i just want to uh, mention again that cementing depends on temperature of the operation theater the cement was in the freeze and it has been taken out about 10 15 minutes before please note the time right now okay noted so it will be just gently stirred and as it becomes a early dawi stage we will put it into the uh, cement gun yeah as i was speaking that it is the temperature matters warmer the theater quicker is the setting and we keep it in the freeze just to make sure that it remains in its intact stage it comes out about 15 minutes before as i have mentioned and that's the ideal time so let's see how it goes you can just uh, Is it ready already, Lizu? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. The way you do normally. So as he is putting it, uh, I will I will mention two things that we do cementing in the uh, retrograde filling technique. The nozzle will go inside, and just to suck out the air and everything, uh, we put this one. It goes right up to the bottom while the air comes out, and. I'll also show one thing. This is a nozzle which will be fitted into the gun, and there is a blue wedge which uh, will block the canal proximally as much as possible. As I inject the cement, this is the way I will do it. It is mounted to the gun. So yeah I know that people do use uh, cementing by pushing with fingers but uh, it's always recommended to do it with the gun so in my watch it is roughly around 2 minutes so then I can just have another minute so for all practical purpose with the theater temperature kept around 
say 18 to 20 degrees uh, normally by two to three minutes the cement is ready for injection and then we hold it with uh, finger pressure that's it so now he has handed it over to me and I will hold it ready uh, till it is ready for injection so as I say that I'll do it into the retrograde technique so push it as much as possible pressurize it with the wage and then I just inject and it slowly withdraws well at the end to some extent you need to use your fingers no harm into that the canal is almost full hold I will take a little bit more and now I just in a normal situation you will be seeing that blood and air bubbling out from here so I withdraw it and I can put a little bit cement I think that's enough so now normally what I will do is we'll just use our thumb to hold it you will feel a bit of pressure yeah. Maybe just we wait a minute and then we uh, inject, uh, sorry, we use the stem. Well, for the purpose of demonstration, I will be using just a trial stem. And once I have gone into the depth, we will withdraw the thing. So, <clears throat> as you enter, uh, remember where your lateral wall is, that's where it should graze. So just push from right into the center. If you have done the broaching well, it should go smooth and simple. You might need a little bit of hammering at the end. Can I just get that scissor please? So this is just to squeeze. I, I'm not sure that if it is possible to focus, we have gone up to the depth so that the second hole is there right at the margin of the neck. So I've gone into the appropriate thing. Cement is like a cake and then you dismantle the stuff. Okay, then there are commercially available pushers and sometimes people use it. I have seen many times that the people put the head and go for a reduction, which I will certainly not recommend uh, because all these movements will cause micro motion and that will cause loosening. Um, best is to hold it stand still. Now, one thing I'd like to show, please leave it on my hands. Into the the canal is fully occluded with cement both below the neck as well as at the top of the neck okay it's very clearly demonstrable here uh, that's what we should do hold it in motionless position if you have gone up to the right depth then the tip of the trochanter along with the center of the femoral head should be parallel uh, just hold it for few more minutes and your stem is cemented well thank you very yeah. nice so that's the cementing part um, now i will go back to my powerpoint um, so sir uh, Yes, please. Ask some questions, sir. So, like, yes. what's your criteria of doing cemented THR versus uh, like uncemented THR? Is it only the age or like what do you see? You know, like, look, cemented THR is more of technique. You need to be very precise for the technique of the cementing, which is an art. 
you have to do this very, very accurately in terms of temperature, pressurization, holding the cement motionless, et cetera, et cetera. There is no hard evidence still that the cemented is inferior or the uncemented is superior to the cemented one. If you follow the studies of the Swedish registry, the New Zealand registry, the Australian, the cemented is performing fabulous results 30, 40 years follow up. But just sometimes we also get carried over. We learn new things and try to implement new things. And obviously in terms of technique, the cement needs more precision and we are becoming more and more T20 players nowadays, we do not want to have that patience. That's why we jump into the uncemented very soon. But truly speaking, it's entirely your call, even for a younger patients, even for a younger patient, because there are 40, 42 years of results are available from the Swedish hip registry with Exeter uh, cemented hips. So if you have learned the training properly, if you can reproduce it, please do it. Right. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, these are some of the just the points to emphasize. Um, I will go back to screen share. So these are just some of the diagrammatic things which uh, I wanted for the junior colleagues to see. They plan uh, your the PPT is visible, sir. Yeah. You can go ahead. Yeah. Now there is no, I mean, it's only my what I'm speaking. So it's for the junior colleagues that where exactly the neck osteotomy should be done. As I was doing during the real surgery, I have mentioned it was not possible to show you properly. So I've just done these pictures. So one finger breadth above the lesser trochanter, that's where your neck osteotomy should be. It's a very, very important technical landmark you should be, you should be knowing. Uh, filling the cup or placement of the cup. We talk it antiversion, retroversion, this and that. But look, for all practical purpose, when you place your trial cup, be it a cemented, be it an uncemented, try to just see and gauge from all around that it is equally convert, covered with the bone from all, all areas, uh, from all sides. If that is so, you know that your position is corrected. This holds true for a cemented cup as well as an uncemented cup. That's how it should look like. So this is just a picture. How do you spread the cement when you do a cementing? You take a 20 gram of cement, uh, when it is just not sticking to your gloves, uh, make it like a dough and, and put it right into the floor and start spreading and squeezing it so that the cement goes cancellous bony interfaces. That's where the cement must penetrate to have a very, very secure fixation. So these are a few technical tips which you must follow if you really want to do the cementing ones. So this is for the neck cut, uh, where exactly the lateral end should be. Uh, it should be very, very lateral and you must place your fingers just below the flare of the less uh, greater trochanter so that you know that your age of the cutting osteotome is almost in line with the lateral cortex of the medullary canal. Because if it is too medial, we'll end up with something called the varus placement of the hip, which is no good. Too much of lateral, you might end up a valgus placement, which will cause thigh pain. So these are just some of the diagrammatic landmarks. It's very difficult to draw these things during the actual surgery. So I just took a piece of saw bone and did this for you. Uh, broaching and placement of the implants. Actually, I should show you this one. Uh, there are three holes in the brooch and the corresponding holes in the main implants. This is very important to set your limb length as well as the offset. This is something you must be very well versed according to the company guidelines which are provided in terms of brochures or PDF files. Your brooch should be going, the second one is called the optimum one, which should be flush with the neck osteotomy. And in most situations, that will give you the accurate length provided you have cut the neck osteotomy well, as well as the offset. And when you do the smooth stem things, most of the versions which are available in the market will have similar markings and you must be able to match those as you place the real implant. Then only you get the correct limb length as well as the offset. And those two are most important to determine the tension in the gluteus muscles, the, the abductors, which will give you the stability, correction of the abductor lurch and a proper gait. So this is very important for the juniors to make 
make sure that they do the right things. So with this, well, now I can take some questions and uh, well, let me just uh, show you some uh, pictures in the poster period. Uh, this is something I use routinely. Uh, we have a rubber wedge uh, to keep the leg like a V uh, in a poster period, which is the safest position. Uh, I just made it with a, with a piece of foam from a local sofa shop. Uh, just uh, wrap it with a water resistant rexin, which can be cleaned and washed. And there are some straps or you can even use a crepe. And that is used routinely for all my cases during the post-op days. And I advise these patients, the, if they can make it, it's fine. If not, at least they can have a big round pillow, which should be placed in between the legs as they go home. I can advise them to turn on both sides. I have no hesitations and even turning on the same side as well on the opposite side, as long as that big round pillow is there, which is the safest. When they sit on the chair, I always say that your legs again should be in a V fashion so that the lateral thigh touches the chair handles. That makes the V again during the sitting posture. These are few important tricks which you should incorporate into the mind of the patients as well as the family members because these are, these are the precautions to prevent dislocation of the hip. So this should be instructed. So I normally go for an early full weight bearing rehab for cemented as well as uncemented. Many, many, many times I hear this question that how long the bed rest ducks up? I said, no bed rest and patient, patients get surprised. I said, no, you will walk back to your house. You will walk up the stairs. You do not need any help. And actually you can walk in your garden the very next day. So I make take them out of the bed within the very second day. Sometimes of course, if the ladies, they are too feeble, okay. For the purpose of the pain, you give one more day, but everything has to be completed. That means walking 30, 40 feet in a corridor, going at least 10 to 11 steps in the stairs and also able to sit and get up from a commode. I advise them that when you, when you tell the patient that what should be the height of the commode, normally the commodes which are available in the market is 19 inches. And I say that you just ask them to put a wooden platform or a brick platform to make it 23 inches. If that is not possible, buy a new commode chair. So these are the advices I give to patients for prevention of bad postures or unscientific postures, which might end up with a dislocation. So yes, now I can again take some questions if you have. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I think there was a question uh, in the chat box about how long should be your screws and how many screws do you put and uh, where do you put it? Well, in the uncemented acetabular cup, I believe you mean. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Well, normally <clears throat> the, the first important thing is the cup as you place into the acetabulum, it must, it must yes. reach the bottom. And that you check with a small, the depth gauge, the central hole, which is normally kept for this purpose that it is touching the, um, uh, the floor. Yeah. And then once it has touched the floor, you are very secure in order to prevent rotation. In most situations, I will say two screws are sufficient. I normally prefer the screws. Suppose if I'm looking from, from the face, at one o'clock and the 11 o'clock position because the one o'clock position screw provide, provided the cup is placed really well. It gives a long screw of around 25 millimeter. I measure it. In most situations, it's around 25 to 30 and the back screw, which is at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, it's normally around 20. So with these two screws, you get an absolute stability. Exceptional situations, I have come out with one, but for the purpose of training to the juniors, I will say go for two. No compromise. Yeah, so because uh, the rotation will be blocked if you are at all using the screws. The idea is to prevent the rotation of the cup inadvertently till it till it incorporates into the native bone. And one screw is a big no no, and minimum of two screws. And there are yeah, times when you have minimum to two screws. Yeah. So, sir, two I, so can I ask a question, sir? Please. So like, yes, Abhishek, please go ahead. Is, sir, is there any difference in the reaming technique? between you know, like cemented and uncemented uh, total hip replacement. And like, suppose the head size is of 46. 
then like from what size you start and what like what is your first size you start with your reaming and what is the position of the reamer which you use you know like in the first reaming okay so well what is the purpose of the reaming the purpose of the reaming of the acetabulum is to produce a bleedy cancellous bone all around to get incorporation of the uncemented cup as well as the cement so we have to achieve this all around the first trimmer normally you take a relatively smaller one because we have the foveal gap at the very bottom and normally it is covered with a thick fibrous tissue so if you really take a say 44 or something that will not go into it. so in order to flatten that depression in the very center part of the acetabulum normally you start with 39 in most of the situations 39 37 41 these are the these are the starting reamers once you have done this you will find that this this elevation has flattened and now you can go for the higher ones as you said what position the position as i had showed you inclination 45 degree and antiversion of 10 degree depending on your thickness of the bone depending on all parameters you might have an you might have a thought of medializing the cup in order to make the abductor mechanisms uh, efficient. But I will say that do not go too far because in our Indian, particularly the woman, I have seen that in attempt to do medialization, we have breached. And sometimes it's a very thin shell of cortical bone. So I really do not attempt to go too far medial. Only the first streamer, I just attempt to be flat on the, on the uh, cortical bone surface. And after that, I just concentrate on dreaming progressively the peripheries. How far you should dream, again, that depends on the company. For the cemented ones, whatever the size of the cup you have decided, you must keep two millimeter of mantle. So if you have a 43, 43 cup, you're going to say, so normally you need to ream probably up to 47. So we'd have two millimeter reamings all around, two millimeter of uh, cement all around. Regarding the uncemented, the company have specifications. I will not name any particular companies, but there are in which you rim up to say 50, which is ideal for jamming a 52 cup. And then also you have companies which have a 50 rimmer and you put a 50 cup, like in this particular case you have seen, I have rimmed up to 46 and a 46 cup has been uh, tightly fit into. So this is something you not just need to follow the company specification. So I want to ask a question. Yes, yeah. Dr. Rohit Boss, please. Uh, thank you very much. So I wanted to ask that many a time uh, there is a lot of osteosclerosis while reaming. So even after uh, reaming, say for many times and for a long period of time, we don't get that uh, cancellous bed in uh, such uh, in a few patients. A lot of patients who are having sclerosis, peri uh, joint sclerosis, periarticular sclerosis. So a lot of times we don't get that uh, bleeding surface and uh, what we are looking for. I know what you mean. Yeah. In these situations, probably the reamer is not sharp enough. I had these problems in, in the beginning of times and I have seen the companies which sometimes they provide the reamers that has been used hundreds of times and it hardly scrapes anything. So, first of all, check your reamers. Normally a reamer provided by the companies is good for about a certain number of cases, but you know in our country, everything runs. They just continue to use it till somebody just really throws it on the floor. So make sure that your reamer is sharp enough, number one. Number two is, if the reamer is not sharp, you know what happens as you're putting more pressure you are actually breaking the subchondral calcineous bone and pressing the cortical bone onto it. So you will never, never actually take out that cortical bony shell to expose the cancellous surface. The cavity is, is going to be deeper and deeper and deeper with your axial pressure. So in these situations, it is the sharpness of the reamer and probably it is the first reamer is the most important because if the first reamer opens up the cancellous bone, and the second, third, ultimately, course it out, course it out. 
So that's how I, uh, yeah, Sudhi, if you want to say something. Yeah, so Malab, if you are really stuck into the situation when you are given a bad dreamer and you can't uh, get a new set, so I'll, I'll, which we all have faced in the earlier part of our careers, then small gently uh, make some uh, uh, cuts with an osteotome. Just gentle few cuts in the osteotome so that your blunt dreamer can bite. So that's one thing that uh, I have done in the past since uh, uh, an earlier days, that small gentle nicks in the... A uh, sclerotic part so that your blunt reamer can now take a bite into it. And once that, as Sir said, once the mm -hmm. first uh, layer is gone, then there is exactly. no bigger issue once reaming. But yes, your question was very valid actually to the younger colleagues who will be getting the worst set in the available in the town. <laughs> uh, here at the most yes. of the time reamers are blunt. Yes. Uh, <laughs> One question. Sashikant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Sashikant, please. Uh, yeah, regarding a uh, question asked by Rohit sir, uh, it's well explained that many times, like post tubercular cases uh, where uh, to, uh, anti tubercular treatment has been completed, or uh, in cases uh, of, uh, say, avian, uh, where we know that a sclerosis is there. So, even despite having good quality reamer, we are right. having problem of that bleeding uh, surface. Uh, and in that case, is, uh, I suppose uh, that coating of uh, what we say cup matters, which helps in osteointegration. So it's, uh, I think, well described that a sclerosis is a known problem. And many times it happens that even despite having just of effort and just yes. of uh, <laughs> instrument, we can have uh, non bleeding surfaces. Correct. And correct. in those cases, yeah, yes, and in yes, those cases, course. that classical cup which we are using doesn't osteointegrate. And for those, we have to. Uh, uh, opt for uh, that coating uh, where, where right. osteointegration. Yeah. So in, in yeah. these cases, Probably. you yeah. have to have two things: low threshold for cementing. So that is very, very, uh, very important. That you need to have a low threshold to cement those cups. That is very yeah. important. That if yeah. you are not getting a good quality bleeding, then you need to oh, check your blood pressure with your anesthetist as well. If your mean blood pressure is too low, then the patient will not uh, ooze also. So that yeah. is another issue. So these things need to be checked low, keep low. And then if you really want to go uncemented and you have planned well in advance, then you can go with a higher quality cup like Gryption uh, cup and a better yeah. uh, uh, surfaced cup rather than your routine uh, grit blasted club. So grit blasted club cups will definitely not work if the bleeding is not good. So my yeah. take will be check oh, with the... Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes, uh, Dipankar. No, 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 no. Well, at the end of the day, whatever cup you have, whatever system of fixation you have, cemented, uncemented, oh, plastered, etc, etc. The bottom line should be having a bleedy bony surface, bleedy cancellous bony surface. If that is achieved, cemented, uncemented, everything will work. So you must work hard to get this cone that I have to have a bleedy cancellous bony surface. Check your rimmers, follow whatever techniques you have. I will say, do not rely on the implant to provide you stability. You more rely on your own surgical techniques to have the stability. An implant will fail by any means. No, no coating, no blasting, no screw will give you optimal stabilization unless bony integration, either with the cement or with the, uh, or with the um, uh, cup surface takes place. Uh, if any one of you have ever visited DeVos, uh, the DeVos laboratory have a beautiful microscopic sections of acetabulums with cements as well as metallic things where they show how beautifully the bone grows in between the screw edges, uh, in between the tantalum wires of the shell and etc. They, they say that this is the stability factor, not your grid blasting or uh, this and that. It is the mechanical interlock between the cup material and the bone. Ashwini, you have a question, Ashwini? Uh... Uh, no, sir. I, I would just like to share an X-ray and just have an opinion of the Pankar, sir, since around that, OK? If that is fine, can I share? Yeah, yeah of course. Please, go ahead. Sir, this kind of uh, estabulums that you get, sir. Yeah. Sometimes this is all. I, I have seen this much of sclerosis in many like a primary osteoarthritis kind of hips that uh, we get sometimes. 
and they do have a lot of sclerosis that actually cannot be uh, removed just by a reamer and okay. uh, then again doing a cemented hips in these uh, actually these are pretty young patients too uh, so uh, now it becomes a little tricky whether to go for a cemented one or to just keep on reaming and put a jumbo cup uh, so uh, i don't know I, i've just i'll just share what i did Uh, like a few times, I if the bone is not, I'm not able to actually remove all the sclerotic bone, as Doctor uh, Rohit Lal uh, was just asked. So uh, these cases usually need some uh, kind of bone grafting also, as the like the hip center has moved up. So I just uh, I ream as much uh, what I feel is good enough. Then uh, uh, at least fifty percent, sometimes the anterior wall or the posterior wall, I get some kind of bleeding bone. then uh, we just uh, put some holes in this sclerotic bone like 10 15 holes then we put some a layer of bone graft then reverse in then put a on cemented cup and just hope that it all osseo integrates i don't know like uh, can we do that thing or okay this is the case where you need the importance of the pre operative planning i will take it this way i will do a ct scan on this one okay and with the ct scan Uh, with with the softwares nowadays actually you can exclude the femur you can take the femur out by 3d orientation blah blah whatever they do have a decent measurement of the cup in the ct this will no doubt a bit bigger but not the jumbo most of these ultimately will find even in your practice you will be pretty good with something around 52 54 something like that in most situations so once you have got the ct scan done at least you have an idea that what size cup possibly we are because normally whatever the companies provide they they have a a window they give from this to this you do not have these extremes so anyway with the ct scan with the measurements in place you prepare your inventory what's that you think about that i am i might need to use bone graft where from the draft is coming from it might come from the iliac crest it might come from that uh, neck uh, and the whatever segment of the head is there and if you have access you can think about uh, bone bank and these but these normally do not integrate well with with live bone for all practical purpose iliac crest or the segment of the neck you can chip nibble it into uh, small chips and that so your bone graft is ready you keep large cemented cups no problems uncemented most of them will be having these 52 54 56 the so called jumbo cups and if you really find it is going almost up to 58 you can even talk about you know this uh, what you was talking about this wages and uh, uh, what you, yeah uh, th- those sorts of things but as as you this is this has also got a bit of protrusion but once you have removed the neck osteotomy you have placed your homans first i will advise that you use the curettes to clean all the soft tissues and these are the situations where you do not start with a 39 reamer because the cup is very pretty big if you use a 39 reamer you will be bang into the pelvis straight away with the first reamer you need to have some sort of resistance for this particular one probably i will have a start with something around say 43 or 45 and then if it goes up to 50 52 i think i'm quite comfortable with uncemented as well as cemented if you have cemented in the sizes of in the range of 50 50 plus then uh, smith and nephew or some other companies will have uh, 32 size heads so this is also something you have to think of to keep your inventory uh, other than this uh, if you are really worried about the integrity of the medial wall you might keep uh, all this mesh and uh, shells and etc but really really speaking i i have gone through these types of cases at least five to six times and i can come out in most situations i am yet to use all these gibson cells and etc etc with a large head something around 52 54 that's it so we can we can reconstruct the wall with the femoral head yes you yeah, can yeah that will be yeah So the center first, uh, of the femoral head that has to be parallel in comparison to the opposite side so you will have yeah. more bone gaps superiorly yeah. that can be made up with that large chunk of bone removed from the neck that can be sized 
fitted with screws and then you can put a reamer. Yeah, uh, and reference with the uh, transverse ligament, acetabular ligament, the yeah. lower limit, and go on increasing the size of the reamer. Yeah. Till, yeah so you, we can use then normal cup, normal size cup, opposite size cup. Yes, Same size can. as the opposite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need optimum stability at the end of the day. Yeah. So my question is now, in protusio, which one is better, cemented cup or uncemented cup? Both are, both are equally well. In the protrusio, you have to decide that what you have inside. Is it an intact piece of bone? Is it, a, is it just a cortical shell? If that is there, it's a gift for you. Do not disturb it. Do not go for that small first trimmer. That will breach that small shell of bone. That shell of bone can work wonderfully well. It's a contained bone defect. You pack it with bone graft or cement or whatever. Do everything to preserve that intact cortical shell inside. That is your <coughs> make or break. So use relatively larger rimmers. So Only that you peripheral rimming. Peripheral rimming. Peripheral fits. And then uh, as you're using an uncemented, you have sufficient amount of bone, I believe, from the femoral head, and which you can put into, uh, take a relatively smaller size rimmer, turn it into the reverse direction, jam it, and then on top you can put an uncemented one. If you do a but cemented, in, in, well. But in any arthroplastic cases, now where there is protusio, which usually is there, so you don't have bone graft there. Yes. Oh, stop. You mean the, already a hemi Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bone graft. Well, these are the situations where you need to keep either um, uh, bone graft from the iliac crest, or you can you can hard, uh, get bone from uh, bone banks. Uh, we we had situations like this, and we keep two or three bones uh, from bone banks. Keep it, and we use that in in those situations. One question from my side, sir. In uh, complete ankylosed hip, sometimes reaming when you ream it, then you don't get the whole shell of the head of the femur. The outer shell you don't get in total. So sometimes it is very difficult, like whether your reaming has been completed or not. So any tips of uh, that uh, reaming in a complete ankylosed hip? Yeah, I know. What you mean is that the hip femoral head is virtually merged. I mean, there is no plane yeah. to negotiate in between. Right. All right. Well, if you carefully look all around, if you carefully look all around just by placing three or four moments, try to have at least one you will almost in all cases will find one particular area where you can negotiate some sort of carved osteotome or something to have an idea of where that ankylosing is. Normally in those ankylosing situations, the most of the ankylosis process takes place superiorly and posteriorly. So if look for interiorly and inferiorly, you will almost inevitably find a plane where you can negotiate an osteotome, all right? That's one yeah. thing. So that's where you can use a carved osteotome take that chunk of bone out and then be very very slow if you want you can use a smaller osteotome and take or nibbler or something to take the bone bone pieces out and then do the reaming under radiological guidance you take an x-ray before keep it in the store and do the reaming in radiological guidance you will find that at some point you are obliterating that femoral head's shadow at that point you know that you have passed the femoral cortex and you are getting into the acetabulum. Right. And you will get a, a small fat of uh, fat once you enter the phobia, once you are in the center, so that you can know that uh, you have gone. That phobia is actually the area oh. where in most situations we'll find to, we'll, you'll be able to find a space to negotiate your osteotome. Yeah, yeah so, some, sometimes we get the shell of the yeah. uh, head of the femur, but to most of the places it is deficient also. No, so no. That, that's, oh. To clear the pulvinar, the most basic thing one has to do, because by that you know where your medial wall is. And that is the clue that gives you, okay, no, this is the final wall. I don't have to breach. Up to this level, I have to go, not beyond that. So clearing pulvinar is very important. In this situation where you don't know where is what, what is where, you are unable to know where the medial wall, other things are, okay, you can increase the, I mean, size, but medial you can't go. 
to have to know you have to identify the medial and the situation is close medial wall is uh, i mean this uh, cotyledonous fossa is full of fibrous tissue and etc you have to clear it by the first reamer which goes a straight 90 degree and then you scoop it out and once you have got this you are there and that is in most situations in most patient. situations uh it, it will not be completely clueless in most situations there will be something left for you yes sir yes sir i do agree uh, yeah. so th that's why my question is should we use the osteotome or the curette uh yes a carved osteotome a gentle fine carved osteotome uh, go slow the advantage of the osteotome is it's entirely under your control uh, it takes the shape and also of course you can take a curette be slow be slow take bit by bit you do not need to take a large chunk at one shot okay it will take another 10 minutes but take it small small pieces no problem nobody is going to blame you for that but you can curate it out you can osteotomize it out do it slowly do not breach the cortex yeah. medially that will just jeopardize your strength of fixation um, actually don't try to lever it out a big chunk because yeah, most of the times these these bones are osteoporosed also they are fused osteo i mean ankylosing spondylitis the bone is i mean weak osteoporosed and, not... and i will also say one thing like if you have the shell like this and your osteotome is going this way do not lever it like this you will break up this edge so you rather once you have negotiated the osteotome you just do it this way this way yeah okay you try to do it the other way you will almost inevitably <laughs> end up breaking something that that the thing i was and, pointing to and if the situation lies that if the part of the head remains there and all the surfaces are bleeding can we stop there and fix it up no uh not really not really if the part of the head remains i mean what do you mean i mean you can at least nibble it out you can use a yeah. sharp nibble everything to just uh, take it out small small pieces piece meal take half an hour extra but take it out what's what's uh, there is no way that that can stay you can beat it at any any way yeah. even if even if the head and the acetabulum are totally fused totally fused means yeah. bony ankylosis complete even then you have to find the proper proper place of acetabulum where the acetabulum lies otherwise the end result long term result will be poor I I was lucky. I had the opportunity only once in my life to watch a surgery of converting a hip arthrodesis into a total hip replacement. That was again during my training in the UK, and uh, it was uh, Professor John Robinson from Exeter. Beautiful surgery, I must say. So there was a continuous trabecula from the iliac wing right up to the trochanter. All right. So he has cut the uh, neck flush. uh cleared the neck at the back the capsules and everything were all stuck so anyway at the end of the day i am looking at a acetabulum shaped structure with solid bone yeah there is no like acetabulum is a socket isn't it so there is a solid bone so what he did so he took again the smallest trimmer so acetabulum is being created so first uh, a little hole then another one then another one but surprisingly when it went right up to the end we found that at the last bit i will say of the total surface area some 20 30% of the surface area's femoral cortical surface is still there that means yeah. the ankylosis has taken place <clears throat> if you consider the total surface area that 30% is still joined yes so do i that was wonderful to see yes yeah. yes Yes, uh, I would like to share my experience. Sir. So when I was there in Ames with Malhotra, sir, he was doing an ankylosis case. Sir, but actually there was one study was going on in which uh, where complete ankylosis in case of uh, ankylosing spondylitis was there. He used to say two things are very important. Number one, you should use image intensifier whenever in doubt. Yes, of course. To locate that is point number one, and point number two, first identify pelvina. inferiorly where whatever ankylosis is there at in inferior part there must be pelvina so yes. you have to locate it just identify it and bit then start reaming one question which uh, rajivaran sir asked ki when we 
found adequate say acetabular shape but still some bone is remaining there so he used to say ki superiorly and posteriorly sometimes or most of the time in case of fine collagen gas chondritis there is complete bone yeah even cartilage get encolored so if you are getting adequate bone and you have uh, bleeding also are, yeah bleeding bleeding is there and radiologically you know that bone is uh, totally encolored then so particularly superiorly and posteriorly and in his, uh, inferiorly you have reached at the pulvinar and medial wall is intact then there you can uh, go for go for it yeah uh, that's what yeah. some Basically, some of some of the some of the literature has mentioned that and uh, i have come across one case that's why i have asked it so no, in that case you can go ahead basically you have to clear the cotyl lloyd by the clear the pulvinar reach the medial wall that way you are restoring the normal center of the uh, i mean hip or nearer to it and that is very important. Yeah. so you yeah. cannot leave it go you have got the whole cancellous surface i can add their fuse also so better apply so what what will happen your hip center is lateralized and that is if that is not acceptable if i can do it you can you should do uh, uh, i will restore the i mean uh, center of the normal hip and I as much nearer to it as possible look these types of cases i will say that as we were as we we can see from our discussion what makes or breaks is pre operative planning these are the cases you just need to sit with a cool of your mind think what i am going to do write the steps sometimes like the ao ao said that what i am going to do first second third uh, what are the inventories required keep it writing and then maybe you just hand it over to your nursing colleagues and everybody in the day earlier so that they also read they know what to expect with your assistance pre operative planning in these difficult cases is the is the most important thing you need to have steps to do you need to have adequate equipment logistic infrastructure c arm um, bone graft uh, wages whatever you can say because we work in a place not like endo clinic they have everything on the shelf okay ye le aao wo le aao sab aa jayega we do not have a second size cup sometimes if you practice say i i work in durgapur it's about say 200 kilometers from calcutta they bring only one size so there is no no uh, backup for if things fall apart of course now we have a little bit of more infrastructure so planning ankylosing means iatrogenic injuries during the surgery that iatrogenic injury can involve the acetabulum that my geopartage your fixation that iatrogenic injury might cause problems to the femoral shaft you might end up uh, breaking it by some means everybody has done it so you need to keep these rare situations in your mind long stem that plates uh, etc etc for ankylosing cases the difficult cases uh, so that's why i say pre operative planning is the most important in these difficult cases So regarding case which Aswini had showed, uh, that uh, okay. uh, we found that initially, uh, uh, sorry, inferiorly osteophyte is so much so that we may actually get confused that this is the floor, and uh, so uh, you said that in these ki- uh, kind of cases we can start dreaming with forty three. So initially, I have found that when we are starting with larger reamers, sometimes we end up dreaming uh, higher. with high hip center so isn't it okay to start with 39 go up to the floor inferiorly and yes. then gradually start with the uh, large size uh, reamer yes so i it. think what he, what he meant uh, initially was that you identify the floor and and once you have identified yeah. the floor you have to cover the whole surface yeah. the whole uh, yeah. hemispheric yeah. surface floor or medial floor. yeah okay uh, one more question sir uh regarding the uh, oh, question uh, go on so we, and, we need to stop now no and let us <laughs> well i'll just have some say, say, on, it's a endless no no regarding yeah. the uh, topic which has been asked actually there was one question uh, abhishek asked one question regarding choosing cemented or uncemented so particularly in uh, elderly cases say 75 80 where uh, osteoporosis is very evident uh, don't we go in favor of uh, cemented 
as compared to unsemented so that we can mobilize a patient early sorry uh, just just uh, summarize and repeat the question please yeah uh, uh, regarding cemented and uncemented in, in case of elderly patient where uh, evident osteoporosis is there and we are going for thr in those cases uh, isn't it uh, that doing uh, cemented is better than uncemented so that we can mobilize early we can rely uh, cementing uh, on cementing uh, in elderly osteoporotic patient well 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 the results of cemented or uncemented fixation in osteoporosis same. are same same are same it has been it has been it has been seen everywhere in the world the rehabilitation you cannot compromise on that elderly person to sleep uh, to lie in the bed for another uh, 3 or 4 weeks or whatever when you come out with a hip replacement your your writing should be that mobilize tomorrow full weight bearing unless other problems yes he might have a blood pressure problem he might have a visual problem he might have blah 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 but your fixation arthroplasty is fixation secure fixation of the implants your fixation cemented uncemented osteoporosis osteoarthritis whatever must allow full weight bearing rehab the next day 24 hours even in uncemented no place there yeah. is no place yes, yes. for yes. delay even in uncemented i have asked this question to professor zwai muller i have asked this to many many stalwarts that total weight bearing fixation next day otherwise what is the purpose of the operation yeah and the last question is the uncemented sir if the uh, both the screw hold is not good should we wait uh, mobilization or not no if, uh, why the hold is not good why the yeah, whole, yeah. whole uh, screw is not good so sometimes it in osteoporotic patient if you have the No, no, no. no, press fit. If, if There should be the press fit of upper cup. No, no, cup, yeah. cup is press fit. I am talking about this too. Then, then, you then forget about the uh, screw. No, if the cup is press fit, if your first screw is not good, then you still have two more screws. Yeah. You still have two more screws. So make sure that they are correct. Can I They're... say something? Yes. Yeah. What I do because most of the Indian patient bone quality is not. so good yeah. the thickness is not uh, also very good so what dr rajiv has told it sometimes happen so for that what i do on left i mean right side the 12 o'clock hole i just simply rotate bring it to 11 uh, 1 o'clock while on the left side i rotate it and we can bring it on the 11 o'clock and then most of the time my screws are larger longer in uh, i mean length and the purchase is very good and this, the 12 o'clock which is now 11 or 1 i i usually 35 for the maximum i can get i take the help of sometimes if i am in doubt uh, see ar whether i am going heavier this way or that way or not and then i try to keep uh, put a longer screw larger screw and most of the time i am I, I am able to get good purchase of this. I think, sir, we have uh, yeah. surpassed so, the time limit of our webinar. So I think yeah. if we have uh, any any quick questions, so one has the last slide from my side. Yes, sir. Please go so, ahead. So uh, I will say, can you can you see it now? Yeah. yeah so, yes, yeah. yes, yes. We can. So for this is for the junior colleagues sitting in every part of the country that when you talk about hip replacement. you must be having a correct selection of the patient for the surgery the patient selection indication must be evidence based you stick to the standard operating practice principles do not try to be innovative ingenious at the very beginning do not try to hit a sixer in the very first ball i know the t20 is the popular form today but still the best batsmen are those who have played the test cricket well so learn the principles learn the principles and apply it both cemented and uncemented have excellent outcomes don't be carried over by the company by these and that excellent results equal results are available even today with cemented and uncemented it's just a matter of technique and correct application and then 
you devise your own pathway by learning from people from colleagues from juniors from seniors yeah. from everybody yeah. there is yeah. something yeah. everything yeah. to learn so incorporate all of them into your practice yeah. and have a pathway and that should evolve uh, that take you to to your journey thank you very much for my friends that's the end of my presentation um i i hope you had enjoyed and um, i think uh, uh, we can we can uh, Achha, yeah. no we we definitely have enjoyed sir it was a very lucid presentation a very nice videos uh, both of them actually uh, it was wonderful uh, having you on board and share and getting your experience shared with us and answering all the questions all around There's some nice discussion ranjit sir and uh, ranjit sir rajiv anand sir madhusudan sir rajiv bhat sir rohit boss and other uh, colleagues ashwini keshab and uh, all ashish is also here so we had all uh, round discussions uh, abhishek is there so we are, thank you very much sir and uh, we hope to get you again in future for some or other thank webinar you. because i know that you are very keen uh, teacher and uh, you make very nice videos you and you are you are very much into teaching and learning so we'll be looking forward to host you again in bihar orthopedic association webinars so all your uh, sarab sir uh, and uh, to just to say final good night to everyone thank you thank you it was quite interesting informative and interactive session thanks to our faculty dr dipankar sen and a special thanks to uh, dr sudeep dr ranjit rajiv anand ji ashuni gorab and everyone who have attended this session i hope in coming weeks we will continue this this series one speaker one talk and Excellent. i hope for the best thank you uh, thank dr. you dr sharaf just one last request from my side could you please generate a certificate sort of thing for this meeting because that will be adding to my teaching credentials right. as i we, we, are, we, and we, have, we have discussed this in the last meeting as well online meeting and we are trying to get the online certificates for uh, right. the faculty no and participants and will be sending you in due course time we discussed no this problem. in last week as well i can send one certificate for that i can do that part yeah thank you very much sir so, dr samsul will help in this regard yeah thank you thank you very much thank you Have so much nice sir thank and you good night sir. to our request to our secretary sir madhusudan sir madhusudan sir please uh, final word before we wind up thanks dr samsul uh, really this is very nice discussion i would like to thanks everyone for their time and efforts it was a very educative and interactive session i give a special thanks to dr dipankar sir who demonstrate us very nicely and everything very basic things like the position of the patient how to use the gloves everybody know but he demonstrate how to use the gloves how to use the cautery how to dissect neck excision estabular visualization and how reaming how to make the cement and inject everything the basic things these are uh, these are the very basic basic things and every surgeon need to know uh, we hope it was very beneficial for all the blooming doctors in our association and all over the country lastly i give thanks to our respected president dr sarab sir who has chosen this topic thank you sir and thanks to all of you for this nice discussion good night thank, thank you good night everybody thank you sir thank, thank you bye everybody. everybody good night good night sir thanks a lot sir, sir. thanks from iot tv also tv sir thanks for thank being you, here thank you for a wonderful hosting uh, as always behind the scene man thank you very much wonderful samshul i think samsul samsul is busy from morning till night yes sir yes, samsul <laughs> that's wonderful hats wonderful hats amazing you, yeah hats off to you thank you sir chaliye thank you sir anjit sir request sir good night, good night. abhishek good night good night good night chaliye request all to join tomorrow for bihar square society meeting tomorrow evening 7 pm but certificate is one thing good night sir good night is one thing madhusudan sir and sarab sir that we 